Welcome back, Minties. This is Omar from Near Mint Condition, and today I'm going to do a comprehensive reading order of the New Mutants. So, please stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. Believe it or not, what you're looking at right here is all 100 issues of New Mutants, the very first volume. All the specials, the graphic novel that started it off, and all the annuals. Everything is in here, and it's kind of a mess because it's a mix of omnibuses, epic collections, trade paperbacks, and standard hardcovers. But I hope with this video I'm able to clarify it. And speaking of videos like these, I really enjoy making these comprehensive reading orders. And I've always asked for suggestions. And it's gotten to the point where I'm getting emails or messages or Instagram messages or Twitter messages or just comments with ideas for comprehensive reading orders. And please keep those coming. So what I will be doing from now on is taking a few suggestions every month from the comments, from Instagram, from emails, whatever way they come, and putting up a poll in our Patreon. That way they can decide what I do because deciding is so difficult because sometimes I want to do Batman, sometimes I want to do a Wolverine reading order, and then I'm stuck with not doing anything. So that will do two things. That will make sure that I sure as hell do a video at least once a month, and everybody benefits from it because all of the suggestions will be put up there in a monthly poll. And if you want to check out our Patreon, the description has the link to our Patreon. Now, let's get this show on the road. Where do we start? Well, as you can see, we have an epic. We have two epics, right? There's a second one coming, and I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, a volume two, rather. And then we have a mix of classics. So that's what I started with was the classics. Of course, I own these in the standard edition, the issue, single issues. But I upgraded my classics to this because the original classics only collected... Marvel Graphic Novels Volume 5, which is the first appearance of the New Mutants altogether, New Mutants 1 through 7, and then Uncanny X Men 167. So, why the epic? Well, because the epic introduced a whole lot more issues into this. Um, here's the way that the graphic novel is reprinted, by the way. Graphic novels, of course, were the big oversized books that kicked off with the death of Captain Marvel. I talked about that in my Thanos um, Origins book issue one so what this epic collection has is marvel graphic novels number four again first the introduction of the new mutants new mutants one through twelve uncanny x-men 167 marvel team up number six magic one through four and then material for marvel team up 100 and this is the very intro to the to the characters this is when professor xavier thought his x-men were dead but they were just really lost in space with the brood and it's just classic Claremont storytelling with art by Bob McLeod, McLeod, Bill Mant. Oh, Bill. Oh, I forgot Bill Mantle wrote some of this. Frank Miller drew some. And then the Paul Smith issue. Uh, but Bob McLeod did most of the stuff in New Mutants uh, towards the earlier issues. And that is what's collected in here. And as I mentioned, the classic edition only collected issues one through seven. Um, now, there is a volume two that has been solicited. And it is coming out. And I find it interesting that they decided to put the Magic uh, miniseries in here. Because she does join the team, which I guess will be in Epic Volume 2. So let's move on to the next book. So now we have New Mutants Classics. These came out probably about 2004, 2005 is when this line started coming out. The classic line. And now it's been discontinued. Replaced by the Epics. Um, the classics, however, were coming out in chronological order, whereas the epics are jumping around. That was our first volume, and then we got volume six, and then we're going to get volume two. Hopefully, they will continue the rest of the run this way. But anyway, this classics run collects issues eight through 17 of the New Mutants, so introducing us to Magma, and I think our first glimpse at Magic joining the team, and also Kitty Pride because we know that Kitty Pride was kicked out of the X-Men or Professor X tried to kick her out of the X-Men during this time because he thought they were just going on too many dangerous adventures and he wanted her to be safe. So it's also the introduction of the Hellions, which is Emma Frost's group of young mutants, kind of like the new mutants. And let's move on to volume three, which has the Bill Sienkiewicz cover right here of issue, I believe that's issue 19, which is also the first appearance of Warlock. Not Adam Warlock, Warlock, self-friend Warlock, that guy. Um, and also art by the phenomenal Bill Sankiewicz, which changed the tone of the book forever. Uh, so this classic volume three collects issues 18 through 25 and annual number one. Annual number one has the first appearance of Strong Guy, which you probably know him later on when he joins X-Factor, and also Lila Cheney. 
And by now, oh god, this issue right here. I, I know everybody talks about the Demon Bear Saga and the Legion Saga, but this issue right here, man. I remember as a kid, like, Bill Sienkiewicz's artwork really freaked me out. Yeah, because it's dark and sketchy and lots of use of shadows. But then he drew this issue where Rain goes into a magical Disney-like place. And it's just drawn so beautifully. And that cover alone is awesome. Ah, yes. The introduction of Sunspot's dad in the Hellfire Club. Okay, I can go on. This isn't an overview. Sorry. Uh, 18 through 25. And then we have Classics Volume 4 which is issues of New Mutants 26 through 34. And this is the first appearance of Legion. When they have to go into D Legion's mind, you find out Professor Xavier has a kid and he has multiple personalities and each personality has his own mutant power, making him probably one of the most powerful mutants and most dangerous mutants alive. There's strong guy again with Lila because Sam and Lila kind of started going on at the time. And we have an epic collection coming out in July, uh, volume two. And that collects issues 13 through 31 in annual number one. That one is called the Demon Bear Saga. The first epic collection is called Renewal. So the Demon Bear Saga, because they're cashing in on that name, hopefully there was supposed to be a movie by now, probably. They, it comes out in July. So collecting a whole much, bunch more. So much so that I can get rid of two of these classic and almost a third volume or the fourth volume. And moving on to volume five of the Epic Collection. Uh, this cover right here had one of the creepiest stories that I remember. And that is the fight with the Beyonder. Uh, this also collects special edition of Mutant Mutants number one. And then Uncanny X-Men annual number nine. And if you're familiar with those, those are the stories beautifully drawn by Arthur Adams. And it's the Asgardian War stories. The one that was... Prequeled by Alpha Flight versus X-Men. Those are not included in here, but just the main story arc. Where it starts off in Special Edition 1 and then it finishes out the story in Annual Number 9 of Uncanny X-Men. And also introduces us to Storm yielding the hammer. Which I'm sure you probably have seen that picture before lately. Alright. And yes, um... Let's move on to this and that creepy fight also containing issues 35 through 40 of the new mutants where they all get killed by the beyonder man i just remember it was a really freaky scary issue now bill sinkevich leaves and that is barry windsor smith on the cover but he does not do the internal work this is new mutants classic number six all still written by chris claremont still but instead of Bill Sienkiewicz, now we have artwork by Butch Geis on this run. Uh, and this collects issues 41 through 47 of the New Mutants, annual number 2, and then X-Men annual number 10, Uncanny X-Men annual number 10, which is the first American appearance, actually the New Mutants annual is the first American appearance of Psylocke. She was a Captain Britain character from Marvel UK. Her eyes got stolen by one of the villains in there, and now Spiral replaced her eyeballs with these cybernetic eyes. And here's some more beautiful artwork by Arthur Adams, and this introduces us to the character of Longshot in the X-Men universe. He had already appeared in Anacentes, Anacetes and Arthur Adams' six-issue miniseries. And moving on to the final volume, volume seven, the final issues of Chris Claremont before Louis Simonson takes over the book. By now, Jackson Geist is still the penciler and Brett Bevins becomes, Brett Bevins, that's his name, Brett Bevins, this guy right here becomes the regular penciler. Um, and this issue, or this volume here collects issues 48 through 54. Like I said, the final issues of Chris Claremont. There's a lot of time hopping here and annual number three and that's it that finishes out the chris claremont year so he wrote you know over 50 issues of this run if i remember correctly there's a lot of awesome covers here too like drawn by arthur adams and inked by mike mcnola and or no terry austin does some of the inking too uh just for the covers oh rick leonardi does some of the artwork in here the fight between magic and sim and yeah, leading up to things in inferno which we'll talk about. So that's it. That's This is the regular standard book. And then, oh yeah, I love the fact that they put pinups in here. So hopefully the Epic Collections will have all that and more. Where do we go from here? That book right there.
Fall of the Mutants. Okay, Fall of the Mutants. Uh, this is available in two trade paperbacks, I believe. But I'm not sure if the new mutant issues are collected in there. Um, I mean, they should be. But anyway, this collects new mutants issues 55 through 61. Uncanny X-Men 220 to 227. X-Factor 19 to 26. Captain America 339. Daredevil 252. Fantastic Four 312. Incredible Hulk 340 which is the big ground zero fight between Wolverine and Hulk, and Power Pack 35. So, uh, probably my favorite X-Men event. I probably need to do a top 10 favorite X-Men omnibuses or X-Men related omnibuses. Um, yeah, it's, it's time to start cranking out some videos like that because people have asked me my opinion on these things, and I really never thought my opinion mattered, but I think enough people, you know, more than one, has asked. So somebody cares. Anyway... Uh, I need to stop talking about this because I could go on about this book forever because this is one of my favorite crossover events. Oh, poor dad. Poor dad, bro. Dog. Now, I know Inferno's coming out with trade paperbacks, um, but this is the Inferno prologue. Uh, the Inferno issues are collected in that next book I'm going to talk about here in a second. This is the Inferno prologue. I'm not sure if these are available in trade paperback yet or not. If somebody knows the answer to that, please leave those comments below. But what this collects is um, X Factor 27 through 32. Annual number three, Uncanny X-Men 228 to 238, New Mutants 62 through 70, and annual number four, which is actually the part of the Evolutionary War crossover event. X-Men annual number 12, same thing. Uh, art by Arthur Adams in that, though. And then Material for Marvel Age annual four and Marvel Fanfare number four. So that is one of my favorite crossover events is Inferno. And this leads us to that. So let's talk about the next book here. Now, a lot of this material has been collected in the Inferno Omnibus, um, and I'm sure the Inferno trade paperbacks, but this is the epic collection. Like I said, they don't come out in chronological order. Volume one came out first, and then volume six. This is Curse of the Valkyries. Uh, but this was the last volume that we all needed and we all cheered any fan of New Mutants to have them all collected in collected editions. So what this contains is Exterminators 1 through 4, and uh, uh, New Mutants 71 through 85. So all the Inferno stuff in here from the New Mutant side. You don't need to read the X-Men stuff, honestly. These can be read alone. Uh, the first four issues, uh, or the Exterminators, are thrown in there in between New Mutants, because that's about the only other comic book at the time that mattered to read in between New Mutants. You need to read X-Factor, or Excalibur, or Uncanny X-Men. This, this is what you needed to read. And everything is in here. And unfortunately, it's not a super happy ending for some of the characters because they are separated and the team's starting to fall apart. Uh, Magneto, who was leading them at the time, ends up leaving them. And now the New Mutants are kind of doing their own thing. And so much so that they travel to Asgard and end up losing another team member. And the team is just left without any kind of guidance. Uh, so much so that two two characters from X Factor ended up joining Boom Boom and Richter, and Cannonball and Sunspot are like, man, what the hell are we gonna do? We and Rain is still with them too, of course. She is the heart of the New Mutants, which leads us to the next biggest change that happened in the New Mutants, and that is of course the coming of this young gun named Rob Liefeld. At the time, Wheezy Louise Simonson was still writing the book, uh, but Marvel hired this guy. This guy was only like 19 years old. Right off of his Hawk and Dove run, started doing some covers for Marvel. This one here is actually inked by McFarlane. Um, so this is his first issue. And this collects, this Cable New Mutants in Marvel Premiere Edition, uh, collects issues 86 through 94 of New Mutants and annual number 5. So he introduces us to this character of Cable, who's like this militant leader. And he comes in and he's like, hey, you guys, quit being kids. I'm going to grow you up some. Y'all are going to be soldiers in my war against evil mutants, which is the Mutant Liberation Front. Oh, I, lo I love Liefeld's ideas, too, of these things to come. Um, that's right, because before then, we had people like Bird Brain on the team. Bird Boy. No, no. Bird Brain. Come on now. Yeah, but people, all these, all these characters are now gone. And we had this leftover team to pick up the shavels. So... Cable comes in and he's like, I'm going to make you guys warriors. And everybody's like, yeah. And as a kid, as like a 13, 14 year old, I ate this up. I was like, oh my God, the, 
New Mutants are changing. They're not about being a bunch of jokers on a team. Now they're about being a bunch of badasses. The fight between Sabretooth, the skinny-ass Sabretooth, and Calban uh, for revenge of the his dead friends during the Mutant Massacre. That feeling issue. Oh, yeah, and I love how connected Cable was when he first appeared. He's like, yeah, I know Wolverine. I know Moida McTaggart. I know everybody. And you're like, man, who is Cable? He's such a badass. He has a really crappy name, but he is a badass. Rob Liefeld, man, that guy, no matter how you feel about him, he really changed the game back then. Uh, and of course covers. Now, surprisingly, this is not collected in oversized format or anything. And I just saw that he has a Rob Liefeld Marvel Universe Omnibus coming out, and none of these stories are in there. So I'm thinking probably a Volume 2 will have that. Or maybe a New Mutants Omnibus, because none of the New Mutants has been collecting in an Omnibus format. Well... Except for three issues, which we'll talk about here in a second. So I've talked about this before. This is a hardcover reprinting. This is Days of Future Past, by the way. Reprinting the classic story. But this is the only way that the Days of Future Present story is collected. And that is a crossover event between a bunch of the annuals. So uh, what you have in here is... The, the big one is, of course, New Mutants Annual Number 6. Which is part of that event. Which also included uh, X-Factor Annual 5. Uncanny X-Men Annual 14. And Fantastic Four Annual 23. That, that's the big main thing that you needed to know about this. Okay, if you remember, we left off with issue 94 in Cable and the New Mutants. And the next set of issues of New Mutants are found in here. This is Extinction Agenda, the hardcover. Um, this collects a variety of issues, like collecting Uncanny X-Men 235 and 238. And then jump all the way to 270 to 272. By the way, this has been reprinted in... And I think in that issue right there, The Fall of Mutants, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then New Mutants, which is, this is the important thing, 95 through 97, The Death of Another Character, and X-Factor 60 through 62. And that leaves us three more issues. So, where are these issues? Well, look no further than X-Force, Omnibus Volume 1. Remember when I said there was no New Mutants in Omnibus Editions? There's only three issues, and they're all in here, and it's the last three issues that changes the team forever, and nothing will ever be the same. Right, Marvel? Right. So, this collects New Mutants issues 98 through 100 and annual number 7. So, I'll take it back. Four issues. Three issues and an annual. And the annual is part of the Kings of Pain storyline with the crossover event with the New Warriors, X-Factor, and Uncanny X-Men, the return of Proteus. But let, let's look at these three issues right here that set up the ongoing things to come later on. These are all uh, by Rob Liefeld. Uh, Louis Simonson has left the book because Marvel said, hey, this is the guy that's selling the book. We need to focus on him. And he chose his own scriptwriter, and that, of course, is the legendary Fabian the Ciesa. And together they co-created some of the greatest characters in Marvel history. Uh, one so big that, actually a couple so big that they were in movies. And of course I'm talking about Gideon. False. I am not. I am talking about Deadpool and Domino. And that's not even the real Domino. Spoilers. But he also created Shatterstar and Feral and brought Warpath back into the game. And set up what was to become X-Force. And then of course the big reveal of who Strife was supposed to be the entire time. Holy shit, it's Cable. The entire time it's been Cable, or is he to have a doppelganger? Uh, well, you'll have to read X-Force to find out. But that's another story. And that is it. That is every single issue of The New Mutants collected in oversized format, in trade paperbacks, and in hardcover edition. But it's all there. All 100 issues, all the specials, all the annuals. If I missed anything, please leave those comments down below. And yes, there are other New Mutants series that take place after this. If you want me to do a comprehensive reading order of those, leave those comments down below. And if you enjoy this type of video, please think about supporting our channel. The Patreon link is in the description. Again, this was Omar. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.